If you were to throw the word T-bird into a search engine on the internet, you'd come up with an extraordinary array of clubs, organisations and chapters all dedicated to the love of the Ford Thunderbird. You'll also probably find the Thunderbird Centre, which is based here in Michigan, and the owner is Bill Gill. How are you today? Bill, nice to see you. Now, you might think this is the Thunderbird Centre, but no. This is just Bill's garage, a multicoloured neon shrine to the car itself. Bill, what is the magical allure of the Ford Thunderbird? It's the beauty, the styling, it's nostalgia, history, modern old car. Just a lovely car. Uh, just a pleasure to drive and a pleasure to observe. Just something extremely enjoyable which your wife and I have both enjoyed since 64. And they don't come better than this example here. This is in 1957. Tell me a bit about this particular car. This is a body off Concourse restored car. Did five years ago. We added a wire wheel to it, which were a production for 62 Thunderbird, but just add some snap to it. If you change the wheels back, it would be very, very, very original, right to the color. It's uh, just a lovely car, and it was a Las Vegas, Nevada car. Well, it's clear that, uh, you know, this is a professional job. I have never, ever seen any car as clean as this. It's incredibly clean. Well, it's, it's been driven uh, for five years, but maintained well. And that's the magic, is put it in a hoist, raise it up, clean the bottom of it, and, and spiff it all up. You must get the toothbrush out and everything, though. In well, we use a cloth and and uh, tongue depressors and different things of that nature. Now you are in many ways Mr. Thunderbird. You, you're, you're in charge of the Thunderbird Center which caters to every need for Thunderbird enthusiasts. Yes, we... Over the years, how many Thunderbirds have you had? In excess of 800. 800? Yes, 24 of the most I've had at one time in my hands. And uh, just a T-word lover and a T-word person and you love all these cars but just don't fall in love with them. Right. Then you can divorce them. Uh, yeah, because you have to get rid of them sooner right. or later. So it's just a, just a love and a pleasure the wife and I both have. Okay. Well, show me around the car, would you? Uh, what have we got up here powering it? Well, we have a 312 uh, cubic inch motor, 245 horsepower, single four barrel car, and which matches the data plate, of course. And everything is very, very concourse correct, otherwise original as Ford did it. Uh, over restored. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Uh -huh. When were they first introduced the Thunderbirds? This is a 57. Well, September 9th, 1954 was the introduction of the uh, 55 Thunderbird. Now, of course, a lot of famous people have owned these cars, haven't they? Oh, certainly the Sinatra family, Frank and his daughter both, of course, and uh, Betty Hutton was, just a, was a singer, and you could just go forever and ever, and uh, uh, just hundreds and hundreds. 50% mm -hmm. uh, of all Thunderbirds built in 55, 6, and 7, were shipped to California, movie stars, money. Mm -hmm. And that's very true. Now there's probably 15% left out there because most of them are back east. And when it comes to your Thunderbird Center, are you finding that Hollywood movie stars are coming to you now to, to find parts? To We have a, uh, most people like that don't come directly to me. They all hire an outsource, another company or mediator to buy the parts, of course. Mm -hmm. And uh, we do meet a lot of interesting people. William Clay Ford, I bought his Thunderbird years ago. And uh, Mr. Jack Nasser was here several years ago. And I have a couple other T-Birds, a pink one and a gray 56. And he was possibly interested in buying one for his wife. And so it was a very interesting conversation, of course. Mm -hmm. And uh, just a lot of people. Uh, Mr. Jim Holnick, CEO of Chrysler Corporation, a T-Bird owner, and just a lot of uh, Oh, very well known people and a lot of Ford executives of course own T-Birds if not two or three. But it's the love of the car, it's the pleasure, the beauty of looking at it. Just to have it in your garage and to walk out in the morning and say, wow. You see, a lot of American classic cars are beautiful, you know, they, they speak a lot about a, a portion of American history. But for you, why is it the T-Bird and not one of the many other beautiful classic cars? I think it's the influence I got when I was in my early teens of unfortunately the rich man in town always had the Thunderbird and uh, very much excited me. I thought they were the most beautiful thing in the world and still do. And so in 2002 a new Thunderbird coming out. And I ordered my new Thunderbird four years ago from two different dealers so I have two of them on order. Will I be the first one to get it? Well I don't know this for sure but uh, so hopefully I'll end up with two new ones and that's I just think they're lovely. It's beautiful. There, is there a cachet then to, to get being the first to get one? 
My wife thinks that's everybody's little dream. There's no doubt about that. It's, that's, uh, being is going to be limited production the first year, of course, and you know, it'll be the personal black is always nice. <laughs> no doubt about that. Have they been true to the styling, Jay Mays? Has he, has he got the styling right? Has he, the echoes of the past in the new one correct, in your opinion? There's some taste of the new and the old together, and there's some changes on their new roadster they built with like 62 with the tunnel cover in the back. And yeah, there, it's, there's some taste there, and uh, we have to keep modern, we have to keep up with the emissions and airbags and safety and all this stuff, so there has to be change. There has to be safety change. But then again, it's a two-seater Thunderbird, therefore it's a very, very wanted item. Yeah, I say the new car is bringing a lot back for the old car, and bringing the prices definitely absolutely up. So these are a good investment? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Well, good investment only if you're wise and hire a guy that knows the car well to appraise it for you. Okay. And tell you if you're making a good investment. <laughs> so, uh, go on then, Bill. How much are you going to sell this one to me for? Mm -hmm. Well, on. truthfully, if you brought this car to an auction right now, it'd probably bring uh, an honest 75 in Phoenix next week. 75,000? Yes, sir. Wow. Yes, sir. I believe it would. And again, you can buy somebody else's headache, which they may not know the value of it when they did it seven years ago, for example, and might be able to buy this car for $30,000 by shopping and having a good advisor. Mm. <laughs> That's the magic. Having a good appraiser, a good advisor, knows the product well. And this is something else we also do in a local area, or we occasionally fly to Dallas or wherever if they wish to pay the fare. Hmm. So it's a lot of fun. So you do spend a lot of time moving around advising people on what to buy? Yeah, I spend probably two months a year on the road of uh, buying parts, you know, rare parts, or looking at a special car for somebody or appraising cars. Hmm. Oh, absolutely. It's the pleasure of the business. It's actually make money at fun. And it's just be like playing baseball. <laughs>